Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming Forum. Today in the Sunturn Map Better tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to detail a church building and a school building. Now the reason I'm combining the two is because I got the uh, request to do the church building, but that is actually school number two. So I'm just going to, you know, combine the two and do school number one at the same time. Might as well, just because they're pretty related. So, um, this school number one is going to be the harder one to detail, obviously, because it's a lot bigger. But uh, I'm going to start actually with school number two, and I'm actually going to treat it like it is a church, at least at first, anyway. So, uh, some of the items that I'm going to be using, uh, one of them, let's undo that. I'm going to be using bench wood number one, and so pretty much in a in a normal church, you've got some sort of aisle system where you know it's they're facing towards the front of the church you know where the speaker is so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna use this bench wood number one and I'm gonna create some sort of aisle system here so I'm gonna use the control B control N trick to line this bench up right in the center of the building then I'm gonna move it back however far back you want I'm gonna copy that of course I'm gonna use um, the the transform snap transform and since that doesn't leave very much room in the middle I'm gonna move it back two more maybe and that's pretty good so now we've got uh, aisles that are pretty much even on either side and um, there's a couple ways to do this so you can either start them at the very back or you can start them uh, about a human's width away or a, a character's width away anyway and then you just wanna copy paste these up towards the front of the building pretty much as far as you want it depends on how much room you want to leave for the speaker and that looks that ones need to be a little farther there we go so in terms of the place that the speaker is going to be speaking from um, the best thing to use for that is table wood number one so I'm going to copy that and put that up here now guys, uh, feel free to scale this however you want. Um, I'm actually also going to use the Control n trick and Control b trick to center that right in the middle so that I can get it, you know, obviously directly centered. So I'm going to scale this a little bit. I'm going to make it a little thinner. And uh, that's pretty much all I want to do to it. But guys, feel free to customize the widths and heights and whatever as much as you guys want to. So that's pretty much it for the church part of the building. Uh, the one other thing that you could add, or that you should add, is a cross. Now I've seen it uh, placed on there multiple ways. One is placing it right here, and have it sort of protrude from the building in that way. Another way that's more classic, I guess, would be to place it up here. Now if you do it this way, uh, there's something else you can add that will maybe help out the feel of the building. It's sort of optional, but you could also put a clock there. Um, that is also, that would go as well for the school building. Obviously, you guys can center these as much as you want. Um, I'm not focusing on really centering them. So there's a basic church. Um, some other things that you could add to the back uh, that I didn't actually have out there are graves. Um, this would definitely be for more of an outdoors thing, but uh, you could make some sort of basic graveyard out of these, you know, with multiple of them you know maybe some are like knocked over buried in the ground you know it really just depends on what you guys want to do so feel free to mess around with those graves in the back and yeah that's pretty much it for the church part of this so let's move on to decorating a school now I'm only gonna decorate uh, this school because this other school building can pretty much be decorated almost exactly the same except with less effort so if I show you guys how to do this you should be able to do the other one so let's start by creating one of these classrooms. So pretty much the way the school is laid out is you've got one classroom here and another classroom here. So I'm just going to do one of these and let's do it with these normal tables. So pretty much you can use either type of table here. Uh, it doesn't have to be wood, but um, I just chose this because why not? And I'm going to be essentially doing almost the same thing with the tables as I did for the aisles. Just creating two rows on either side. I'll center them a little bit more and then I'm just gonna copy paste those down and I'm gonna be leaving enough room for about one chair in between uh, there's multiple ways you could set this one up 
but uh, this is probably one of the better ones and it needs one more and yeah that's not bad so we fit five tables in there we're gonna leave this front space empty just because we're gonna want um, let's see just a board actually it's a uh, white board or chalkboard yeah it's a chalkboard so we're gonna leave the chalkboard up there and we're gonna leave a little space for the teacher to move around and then we've got all these desks so pretty much we need a chair to put behind them and obviously you guys can uh, customize this however you want make it more realistic make it less realistic really just depends you know on what your style is you could even potentially fit two chairs behind each table it's gonna get a little cramped but that would definitely work as well now I did leave out this table here and that's just because I didn't want to crowd the doorway I would suggest not crowding the doorway because it will make it hard for players to get in and out and it'll make the zombies a little glitchy with their navigation and stuff so a few more things we can add to the front of this schoolroom. Uh, one is a small table. So um, the table I'm going to be using is table wood number four. This one is pretty nice. You could definitely just pop it in one of the corners there. And also something you can do with the table is you can put a book on it. Now I only have one color of book, but of course, guys, there are plenty others. If you just search book in the search bar, you will find tons. Let's let's do it right here book there we go all the colors so feel free to mix those up however you guys want to obviously be creative and have fun so besides that there's not much else room in the middle or the front of the the classroom so you know there's a little more room in the back and we're gonna put a few things there as well so I've got shelf number three and this is actually a pretty nice one to put pretty much wherever you have extra space so I'm gonna line this up to the back and you could potentially fit two of these in here. Um, yep, yeah, that wouldn't be terrible. And, you know, that wouldn't be too much room taken away from that chair either. Now, of course, you guys can just leave them empty. You can put item spawns inside them. Or, of course, you can put books in there. Books would definitely be the highest quality, but, of course, it's the hardest. It really just depends on how much detail you want to put into this, how much effort, and how much time you want to spend on this. So this is pretty much the basic school layout. Uh, you can pretty much do the exact same thing except just using this entire huge space for that. So um, something else you can do to enhance it a little bit is make it more of a computer lab. Now there's a bunch of computers here. You can use any type. You could have all of them with laptops. You could have all of them with this nice desktop monitor and something underneath. Or you could have something with um, that old desktop as well. So I'm going to put one of each in here just to show you guys what it might look like. So if you have it with uh, laptops, they fit pretty well on the table. Looks all right. Uh, actually, the high school I went to growing up did have laptops. So it, it's not too unusual, you know. In terms of a desktop sort of setup, obviously you'd put the tower underneath the table and you'd have the monitor on top. That doesn't look bad at all. So that would work as well. And for the big, huge, clunky desktop, you know, you can just set that on top and that would work for sure as well. So those are some of your options. Obviously, if you choose one, I would probably repeat it throughout the entire classroom. And of course, guys, you don't have to use wood. Uh, the metal might look a little better if you have uh, computers there as well. So I'm going to do one more type of classroom. And that's going to be sort of a preschooler classroom. Um, I sort of thought this up myself. Uh, generally, you don't see this sort of design very often. And it's going to be based off of round tables. So pretty much uh, the way it's going to work, the room layout is going to be pretty much using just round tables. And you can fit probably up to about three in here. So obviously you're going to want to space them out so there's enough room in between. And you can put chairs around there as well, so make sure you have enough room for that. But pretty much um, in preschools often they have round tables with like toys or, you know, it's very relaxed instruction for the, for the preschoolers and the smaller kids. So generally round tables just fit for them better. Now, as I mentioned before, you can put uh, chairs around these. Obviously, it'll get a little tight in places, and it is up to you, of course, how you want to arrange them. And, you know, that's pretty much just a part of being a map maker. you got to decide on what your style is for that. Now, I'm just going to leave that for now. You guys can obviously put more down. But uh, besides this, you're probably going to want to put some things on the table. You could put books on the table for sure. Um, something else you could do to put on the table is a chessboard or newspaper. 
that would also be another good thing to place on the table. Um, obviously, newspapers are a little sophisticated for little kids, but who knows? They could just be, you know, learning to read off of it. Who knows? It really just depends. Um, another thing you could do for this type of classroom, you could have the classic uh, chalkboard as in the other classroom, or you could have a television. That's actually not too uncommon as well. Having televisions where, you know, the little kids can watch TV shows is not uncommon. So besides a television, you could also use, um, well, besides the flat screen, you could also use the other type. Um, that's also a little more old-fashioned, but it would work as well. Obviously, arrange it however you guys want. So you could have either or, probably not both. It would be weird to have two types of television inside a classroom. So I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And uh, one more thing you could do is you could put um, couch number two. Uh, in the setup as well. You could really put it almost anywhere. It's sort of like a teacher's lounge chair and yeah, just put it where you feel like it needs to be. Of course, you guys can put uh, shelves on the blank space in the walls. That's up to you guys, but that's obviously another good way to fill up the space. Now, so we get to this part of the building and it gets kind of weird because um, usually in the in the school setups I've seen this area has been blank it's sort of hard to arrange things in this area and it's understandable there's not enough room for a classroom and you know there's nothing that you really can put in hallways well I beg to differ because I found a few things you can actually put in the hallways so here I have filing cabinets files number one and files number two now, when I was originally thinking about it, I was thinking files in school, that definitely works, right? Because they got to have some sort of resources for, you know, the students or papers, place to store stuff. But files number two also looks a lot like a locker. So what I think would be really good is if you guys started putting these in the hallways. Because they definitely look like lockers and, you know, if a lot of people start doing it, it's going to become a thing. So definitely consider doing this. They look pretty well, they fill up the wall space, and you know, looks not bad. Um, of course you guys can fill this up as much as you want, uh, there's multiple wall spaces here. Really just depends on pretty much how you want to arrange it. Also guys, there is uh, this wall space here, you could put some on the back as well. Now obviously I'm not arranging these perfectly, but you know, it's up to you guys to decide how to arrange these. And, yep, hopefully this gives you a good idea. So that's pretty much it for this Unturned Map Writer tutorial. Hopefully you guys have a good idea of how to detail these now. Um, school is a bit of a trickier one, but, you know, it's not bad when you break it down into the rooms. And, obviously, we also have a church. And, you know, guys, feel free to mess around and add your own stuff and be creative with this. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, please like the video if you did, and subscribe if you want to see some. I will see you all later.